There is a type of ritual known as a rite of passage, which usher people from one stage of life to the next, preparing them for their new roles and preparing those around them for changes in their relationships. Mortuary rituals, or rituals for the dead, are a subset of rites of passage as they usher people from life to death. Death is frightening and destabilizing for the dying person and for loved ones. Dying people need to come to terms with the end of their lives and often grapple at understanding the meanings of life and what might or might not follow. Death also affects those who survive. Death turns spouses into widows and widowers and turns children into orphans. Surviving family members need to learn how to cope with the loss of the loved one and need to reconfigure family relationships. Rituals often ease this transition, helping the dying person and loved ones to cope psychologically and adjust relationships. However, cultures vary widely in how they conceptualize death and what lies beyond, and therefore rituals surrounding death, mortuary rituals, take very different forms. We'll look at ritual practices in three religious communities, Jewish, Tibetan Buddhist, and Hindu. To start the topic of ritual and death, please read Barbara Meyerhoff's chapter, A Death in Due Time, Construction of Self and Culture in Ritual Drama. Meyerhoff conducted ethnographic fieldwork at a Jewish senior center in California, and these photos are of her and some of the research participants. The book she wrote, Number Our Days, became a national bestseller, and the film based on it won the Oscar for Best Documentary Short. The chapter you will read is actually from a different book, but it is out of the same research. The chapter is about a man, Jacob Kovitz, who dies at his birthday party at the senior center. Apparently knowing that his life was coming to an end, he laid elaborate plans for his birthday. We might say that he created his own mortuary ritual. Then, after he died, his loved ones commemorated his passing with a series of traditional Jewish ritual activities, including the funeral and the shloshim. As you are reading, try to discern the apparent beliefs about death that are reflected in the different ritual activities, including the birthday party that Jacob Kovitz organized for himself, the funeral, and the shloshim. What can you discern about their views on death from both what was said and what was done? Later, we will head to the region of Ladakh in northern India, which has been settled by Buddhist refugees from Tibet. You will watch the video, The Tibetan Book of the Dead, A Way of Life. Buddhism is the primary religion in Tibet and in Ladakh and other Tibetan refugee communities in northern India. In Tibetan Buddhism, an ancient text, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, Bardo Total, is read to a person who is dying and then also following the death. This image is a Thangka, a Buddhist religious painting which represents several spiritual beings mentioned in the Bardo Total. The film shows the mortuary rituals following the death of an elderly man and also shows how practices of the Tibetan Book of the Dead have been incorporated into hospice care in California. You should only watch part one of this film, subtitled A Way of Life, which runs for the first 49 minutes. You don't have to watch part two, subtitled The Great Liberation. Again, while you are watching, try to discern the apparent beliefs about death that are reflected in the different ritual activities. What can you discern from both what is said and various symbolic actions? To complement the film, you will read an article by anthropologist Robert Desjardins called Liberation Upon Hearing, Voice, Morality, and Death in a Buddhist World. The article is about a community of people who are also ethnically Tibetan Buddhists. They are known as the Yomo people and live in northern Nepal. The article helps round out our understanding of Tibetan Buddhist funerary practices by giving attention to the practices of those who accompany the dying and the bereaved. Like Cindy Del Clark, Desjardins focuses on sensory experiences, 
specifically the sense of hearing. A thread throughout Yolmo funerary practices is the idea of liberation upon hearing. As you're reading this article, try to discern what the people who accompany the dying and the bereaved are trying to achieve for them through their ritual and ritualized activities. To answer this, you'll need to figure out what they mean by a good death and what hearing, chants, and songs have to do with that. We'll also consider Hindu practices regarding death and dying. You will watch the film Death and Dying in Varanasi. Varanasi is a city on the Ganges River in northern India. It is the most sacred place in the Hindu religion. Hindus believe that the river itself is sacred and that if a person dies in the river or has water from the river sprinkled on them in their dying moments, or if they are cremated in Varanasi, they will pass out of the cycle of birth, death, and reincarnation and achieve moksha. This is a Sanskrit word. The film refers to this as heaven, but it's important to note that this concept of heaven is different from that of other religions. Again, while watching, try to figure out the Hindu beliefs regarding death by noting both words and actions. As I mentioned earlier, mortuary rituals vary significantly from culture to culture. One interesting difference that can be seen is whether the rituals aim to hold fast to the deceased, to memorialize, commemorate, and cherish the deceased, to keep strong the ties between the deceased and the living, or whether the rituals aim to release ties between the deceased and this life. In the first instance, you might see emphasis, verbal, behavioral, and symbolic on the uniqueness of the individual and language that emphasizes holding fast, remembrance, and recollection. In another, you might see emphasis, verbal, behavioral, and symbolic on letting go and relinquishing attachments. As you are reading about the ritual practices of Jews, Tibetan Buddhists, and Hindus, try to discern the patterns in the different rituals. Are the rituals in each case designed in a way to preserve ties between the dead and the living and to hold fast to the deceased, or are they designed in a way to release the dead and loosen ties? Preserving the body for millennia, such as did the ancient Egyptians, or setting the body in a boat, sending it afloat, and then setting the boat aflame, as in a Viking funeral, are examples of these two different ritual approaches, but there are many other ways to verbally and symbolically represent different approaches to death, dying, and the deceased. Your conclusion might be the same for all three religious traditions, or it might be different. That's all for now.